things that really made a difference for you in your career as you were uh, leaving UNCW for the success you've had, a couple of things that you might suggest to them in terms of success. Let's start down with the Jay's coming down the table the other way. Absolutely. Um, you should be in touch personally with as many people as you possibly can. Um, take advantage of all the opportunities that are here. Um, whether you have a direct impact, um, I can assure you that in the future it will have an indirect impact on your life. So if you build those relationships, um, you, you don't have to maintain them all like they're your best friend. Um, they will remember you 15, 20 years from now or they'll at least look you up and then they'll figure out what that connection was and you may utilize that. Um, and so just reach out to everybody you can and get involved in everything you can. This is your time to be on campus and take advantage of these opportunities um, without the responsibilities of mortgages and kids and all the other things that come in life. So um, take advantage. Jimmy. I agree wholeheartedly with Jason. So if I could add something, I would probably say next, be a leader. That's important. And I have five leadership principles that I live by. And I'll give those to you real quick. Uh, Hopefully, uh, you'll find them of value. Number five, lead with passion and compassion. Number four, project and instill confidence. Number three, manage the message. Number two, remain relevant. And number one, innovate. So uh, starting with number wow. five. Uh, Great list. Uh, <laughs> with Pat, I, I, people say that I have an energy for whatever reason and that it's infectious. And so I really try to come in motivated and lead with passion. But also I try to have compassion. Uh, I think it was uh, John Maxwell that said that you, before you can uh, take a hand, you have to, to touch a heart. So I try to lead people and show that I care for them in addition to accomplishing goals. Number four, you have to project confidence in what you do, but also instill confidence in those that you lead, as well as those that are above you, that you can accomplish the goals that are set before you. Number three, communication is huge. You have to manage the message. Sometimes it's uh, not always what you say, but sometimes it's what you don't say. I think there's a, a, a southern expression that says, never miss a good opportunity to just shut up. And so I, I, I think about that Back sometimes. <laughs> Number two, remain relevant. I continue to read and encourage professional reading. I was just talking to Dr. Rosen about the book, The Goal by Eli Goldratt that I'm reading right now, but I, I, they say that the top 2% of business successful people read at least two books a week. So uh, I just would encourage you to continue to expand your knowledge and remain relevant in what's going on. A lot of times when they hand you the diploma, it's actually outdated the day you get it. You have to continually refresh your knowledge and not just rely on having a diploma. And number one, those people that can innovate and create are the people that have a future in tomorrow. Wow. Very good. That's tough. Yeah, that's tough. It's hard to follow that kind of knowledge. <laughs> so I'm going to keep it real simple. I told you this when I came in the front door. Find something you're passionate about. Find something you really enjoy doing. Because that will carry you through your career. If you've got that burning passion, that will instill in you to become better at what you are doing. And also, the communication, you heard that from, from Jason and Jimmy. I kind of want to tell us today at 9 o'clock when I speak to those students. Don't get addicted to texting your communications. <laughs> it, is, it is a habit that that generation has and the one coming behind you is definitely addicted to. Face to face, eye to eye, voice to voice, it is something that we are losing and it is something that can't be replaced with abbreviated texting. <laughs> Another thing I think we see that's going away, and your father, you know, I know your father fairly well, thanks to what his generosity and involvement in the university. But he and I had a conversation at one point, and I think his generation's concern about the fact that handshakes were all that were needed to have a deal. You didn't, I'm a lawyer by background, you didn't need a whole bunch of people, of lawyers, lawyers by background in the room also there to say you have a deal. That's your dad's generation that said they were concerned that uh, the handshake or what that is gets lost for what it is, that the handshake. But wouldn't you all three agree that that's also in terms of, of what you're about and the handshake? All three of you. Jim, I don't have the pleasure to know you as well, but I know the other two here. Uh, what about that? 
Um, your word is who you are. I mean, I've heard that since I was little. And, um, you know, good or bad, if you say you're going to do something, do it. And uh, that's integrity. I was going to say your word is your bond, but I would go beyond that and I would say that the broader issue is ethics. You have to, to have integrity, and integrity is not just being honest, but it's consistency between words and actions. And I think that we saw the other side of that with things like Enron and Tyco, and so where people thought all I have to do is have a good education and work hard, I think they're starting to see the value in values. Yeah, uh, don't forget the golden rule. It always works. <laughs>